This episode of Don't Blame Me is brought to you by Away. Away makes first class luggage at coach prices that allow you to charge your phone on the go. For $20 off your order, go to awaytravel.com slash blame and use the promo code blame. That's awaytravel.com slash blame. Promo code blame. I said blame. I whispered at that time, but it's blame. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Don't Blame Me with me, Megan Ranks. And today is a very exciting episode. First of all, hello to all of the fans of the person who is the guest, which is why you've found this podcast. Uh, okay. And Leo Howard is here. Hi guys. You can't see it, but I'm smiling. He is smiling. It's very, it's a ear to ear. It's a creepy smile. Um, but yeah, we're very excited. We have our first guest today. So, uh, thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm stoked. This is my first time on a podcast Yeah, and, uh, I am honored to be on yours. <laughs> I'm very glad. Sarcasm was just dripping. It's dripping. And I feel like I really do need to go over with everybody what this podcast is about because Leo also doesn't and really me. know what this podcast is about. She's um, like, come over. I was like, all right. Hey. Well, together with Jack Ferry. Sup, Jack Ferry. Hi, Megan. I'm back from the dead. You are back from the dead. Yeah. I was going to be like Mel. And then I realized like Mel doesn't have a mic in front of her today. Well, yeah, we're using up all of our channels today because we have a guest. Yes. Whoa. Well, welcome, Leo. I'm so flattered. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah, if Mel has something important to say, I will gladly share the mic because we both have the same cold virus right now. Oh, yeah. And I hugged <laughs> both of you. So if I get sick. Oh, it's inevitable. Just get it over with. That's oh, what I no. say. Oh, Arden no. gave it to us and we're giving it to you. Ugh, Arden Rose. Arden <laughs> Rose. Oh, that Arden. Well, yeah, so this podcast is an advice podcast. And oh, yes. Uh, yes, get excited. Leo loves issuing advice to people and just talking. I love assuming that everyone wants to hear my opinion. Me too. It's my favorite thing. That's why I started this podcast. Mm. Wait, it's an advice podcast. How, pray tell, do people get your advice? Oh, what a really, really great natural segue. I also have the phone number pulled up on my phone too. <laughs> 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 Professionals. I am a unprofessional professional. Basically how you guys get advice from me is by leaving a voicemail at the phone number 310-694-0976. Again, you leave a voicemail at 310-694-0976. It's going to be fun. We got voicemails. Wait, oh, international what, what if you're an international caller? Uh, so glad plus you asked one. that. No, that's <laughs> don't not you, isn't that, isn't that how that works? You just add plus one actually, to you any could, number. You could, but I think some oh. people don't have international calling plans, and God. so we got. And they it. don't like me that much to pay that yeah. much money. We got complaints. I yeah, see. they were like, um, "I'm going broke, and no one's giving me advice." Um, so if you are an international <laughs> caller, you can record a voice memo of your dilemma, your question, your predicament, and then you save that and then email it to us at meganpodcast at gmail .com. You did it. Wow. Before we get uh, into it, um, for the, the few of you listeners out there who don't know Leo, how do you guys know each other? Uh, Leo, Leo and I know each other because we did, we, let's say we do. We let's, do. We, it's always, it's always past tense. Why do we say I know, it past tense? I don't tense? know why we say it past it's tense. It's still on. Yeah. We do a show together called mm. Freakish, which is on Hulu. It's a Hulu mm. original. Um, and our second season is actually coming out on it October is. 18th. I didn't like you when we first met. No. Do you want to tell that story? Yeah, that's my favorite story It's his story favorite to story to tell. It's like, hey, what's the story about when I hated Megan? For no, it's just like, days. you know, you always want everyone you work with to be extremely professional and Ugh. like, you know, first impressions, <laughs> first impressions I like are where this is going. Uh. <laughs> so we're all sitting around this table reading and we're sitting there and supposed to start on the dot. It was like 11 or something like that. Oh, and I know this story. 11, 10 goes by nothing. <laughs> we're still waiting on, uh, this character. Everyone's like, Oh, it's Megan, Megan, Zoe. She's playing Zoe. Megan's here. Uh, <laughs> like 30 minutes goes by nothing. So we just start the table read. And then Megan comes rushing in. Sorry, sorry, guys. I'm here. I'm here. And she has cookies. <laughs> and the, the story was that she had run out of gas on the first day of work. And they called the PA to bring her gas. No, no, no. You're messing up the story. Oh, this is my it's story. Worse. No, this okay. is my story. Fine, this is my fine, story. Fine, no, fine. wait, how's it worse? Because I make, uh, it, actually, I like yours better because it makes me seem like a oh. less terrible person. So you keep going with yours. Great. So she ran out of gas. They had a PA bring her gas. And... <laughs> Wait, that didn't work. Something didn't work, and he had to drive you, and you got your car got towed or something like that, right? Uh, okay, my car never got towed, but you're 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 very close. I got in the car, um, <laughs> and I didn't I didn't have gas, but I didn't realize I didn't have gas, and then it was like, oh, you like 
it's like it, I've passed the warning. She's signs. one of those pr- people that's like, I know my car. Like, oh, yeah, my yeah, car yeah, has yeah. got this under control. <laughs> and my car did like, not. We're on have E, it. but like I got another 30, 40 miles. And I least. think I remember this is like you had to drive to the middle of nowhere for oh, this reason. That was the right? that was the issue where I'm right. like, I'll Canoga be Park. fine. And then I'm like, oh, this is Canoga Park. This is, this is like 37 miles away. Oh, that's like, far, yeah. oh no. Um, and the issue was is when I finally found a gas station, because there were no gas stations for an extended period of time, I realized that not only did I not have gas, I didn't have my wallet. <laughs> Oh, that's so right. So I had to call production and they had to come and they had to <laughs> buy me gas. And then first day of work, like, first I hadn't met anyone. So this is my first impression of Megan's wow. hearing like about and it's all like of this. the, and it's not an accurate impression of me. No, it, it, it couldn't be more opposite. So yeah, she walks in. I was like, Oh, here she is. So, so she runs out of gas. Oh, but she had time to bake cookies. That, so and you also didn't think thing. I baked them. You were like this bitch she, probably went she to a stopped bakery. And, oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then, and then we started working together and, um, yeah, we we're now we were friends. best friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's got a happy ending. I know. I when did you start happy. like? When did you start liking me? I don't as actually a remember. I don't actually remember. It's just one of those things that she makes the most aggressive uh, jokes on set, <laughs> and it's shocking. <laughs> like it's jarring for yeah. Yeah, it is. And uh, it's a bit contagious. I'm an acquired taste. Yeah, it's a vulgar sense of humor, which I got along well. tend to love. And uh, then we became friends, and uh, the rest is history. We're second season in, and mm-hmm. uh, it's a fun show. And, it is. Uh, yeah, it comes yeah. out on the eighteenth. We're very excited. Sweet. So oh, yeah. uh, set your um, oh, yeah. alarm clocks to mm-hmm. October yeah. 18th. To stream it <laughs> yeah. only on Hulu. Um, right? I think so. <laughs> I believe so. And uh, so, you know, you're a fan of her raunchy humor, but you are in for a treat. Yes. Oh, yeah. He asked me before. He's like, how censored is this? And I was like, um, Megan, not it's at Megan. all. It's yeah. well, like, I mean, I don't even know why I asked that because it's Megan. Yeah, no. it's TVMA. Oh, you what can, does that mean? It means you can do whatever you, It used to be yeah. X-rated back in like, the 90s but then it got too porno-y pre-leo mm, yeah, yeah he's a child yeah you can you can now uh you can now say whatever you want on Get this ready. podcast your girlfriend is sitting at this table though so i would not say anything <laughs> that's why want. i'm like <laughs> silent i'm just kind of <laughs> hey guys. No. no 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 it's no. okay we got it we got uh, it we got well, what do you say we dive in what do you say <gasps> well, i'm so ready i can't wait to give my advice all right let's, let's do it. start let's get the first call hey megan um so i wanted to see if you could help me out with something um, I've been in a band with one of my really good friends who I've actually kind of had feelings for for a long time. And during one of our sessions, I wrote this song, which technically was about him and how I felt about him, um, which I think he might have figured it out because he started hinting a lot about how he liked the song and how relatable it is and kept pushing me into telling him who this song was about until I finally did and I chickened out and didn't really want to like make him uncomfortable about it so I ended up taking it back and upon me doing that he just kind of continued being like kind of he seems kind of hurt about it. Um, cut to now where I am now living with him and he's my roommate and things have just gotten so awkward from the place where we were really good friends into now where I don't even talk to him and I spend most of my day in my room because I don't really know how he feels about it or how I will feel about the situation. So because I don't want it to be awkward, I just don't talk to him at all. Um, and I do see that he tries sometimes to start the conversation, but I don't really know how to get through this. So I'm trying to see what kind of advice you could give me on how we could either continue being friends or if we should even talk about the situation. That's complicated. It's complicated. So... <laughs> Uh, just to get this straight, because I, I was I couldn't really hear the first half. He has romantic feelings for his friend. Bandmate. Bandmate. That's what I missed. Yep. Got it. Oh. And wrote a song about his bandmate. Yep. And so, his bandmate was like, I like the song. I think it's really relatable. Who's the who's song, the song about? about? Yes. And I guess right. he said it was about him and then was like, No, I take it back. It's yeah. not. And now and they're roommates. And it's a little weird. Yeah. yeah and now know, they're roommates. Yeah, yeah. What the how hell? The, how did that happen? How it's does that really happen? difficult living with someone under a circumstance like that. Like, one, it's it's difficult to live with somebody in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with that awkward kind of tension, it's got to be that's... really awkward and difficult. You feel like you don't really have a safe place, you know? Yeah, that's why you're hiding in your room the whole time. Yeah. Uh, 
What do you, what do you, I mean, I think <laughs> in general, I'm, I, the way I conduct myself is I like to, you are, I'll just say as if I'm talking to you, brother, uh, you <laughs> are who you are. And like, you know, you have these feelings and you can only deny them for so long. And to, until you feel like, you know, you're kind of living something that isn't true to you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, so I would, I'm the type of person that I'm very confrontational and I tend to want to work things out with someone if there's an awkward tension. Yeah. So that's kind of my thought, you know, that's my thought too. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm also in a, I'm definitely more of like a confrontational would rather rip the bandaid off and get it exactly. over with than prolong it. Yeah. In general. I mean, that that's a really difficult situation. The yeah. sort of friend zony kind of breaking out of that is like, and they work like, together if they're in a band. That's yeah, like, yeah. And that's even harder. Yeah. Um, I'm in a band and I know how, you know, drama like that mm-hmm. can kind of fester and that's, uh, Oh, so you're in love with one of your bandmates as well? I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do, you Sorry, handle, how do you negotiate that? <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. Uh, <laughs> it's awkward. No, it's, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, as a musician, I'd be like, dude, write another song about it. I mean, you know? I, honestly, that honestly. was my, my reaction would be like, r- if, if that was kind of a place that you felt you obviously felt a little more confident there to admit that that was about him. Yeah. And even though you didn't do it on the first try, you said it and then took it back. That kind of sounds like the place where you feel a little more open and about being honest. Like maybe, maybe do write a second song. And then yeah. this time be like, Hey, that song, this is about you. This in general, you can't apologize about how you feel because yeah. how you feel is just how you feel. And, and you can't squash it. You either. can't change. Yeah, exactly right. You can't change it. If it's true to you, you got to kind of live with it and roll mm-hmm. with it. And, uh, yeah, so I, I would say you got to rip the bandaid off is kind of the moral of the story, isn't it? It'll be awkward no matter what. It's yeah. either awkward now, awkward later. The awkward, it'll get more awkward the longer you yep. wait. And also, you think about it, what's my life 10 years from now? Would I want to look back on this situation and go, man, I told him how I felt yeah. and it didn't go well? I'd, I'd rather have that happen mm-hmm. than I never said anything and I kind of live with this situation. Yeah, I think so. regardless of the timeline, it'll have the same outcome, so yeah. might as well. Yeah. Get there quicker. And also props to you if you're listening, dude. I'm sure you are because your voicemail's <laughs> on this. But props to you for like writing the song and then telling him. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that takes yeah. a, lot of, a lot of balls. That's good. It does. Yeah. Well, regardless, he should call us back and let us know. Yeah, let us know out. what happens. Yeah. Hi, Megan. I'm 16. I'm a junior and I'm in high school. So I got asked the homecoming by a guy I've been interested in for a while. I'm super excited to go with him, and I've been looking forward to getting to know him, flirt with him, and possibly hook up with him at our after party. However, I found out that one of the other girls whom I am friends with likes him, and also plans on trying to hook up with him the same night, despite the fact that he is my date. I don't feel right claiming him, but I am worried that somebody can seriously get hurt in the situation. The guy I'm going to homecoming with told one of my close friends that the girl who likes him is mean and annoying, and that he wants to hook up with me. I don't want to hurt my friend, but I'm also really into this guy, and I'm interested in starting a relationship with him. I need your advice from a non-biased standpoint on what I should do. Um, Leo, if any of you heard Leo's reactions during this, <laughs> oh my god, his literal shout! Yeah, I shouted. <laughs> I don't know why. It just no. It, it seemed it's, like it is dramatic. Right it's also there's something really nice I about l- other people's drama. Yeah, that you, like I'll no offense, I'm not that invested in. Like I don't, I can still sleep at night. And also, like. I, I, not that I'm like so much older, but I remember when I was 16, things like this, it is, it's so stressful. Oh yes. And it really is. And I feel for you because this is, uh, everyone goes through situations like mm-hmm. this, but the classic triangle. <laughs> the classic Oh, I'm so tri- glad you The classic you asked. triangle with where two parts are into each other and yeah. one part is like, I don't like this. I want you to like me. Yeah. Uh, I've had situations in the past where I, I, you know, I had the conversation. I had a guy friend that, uh, we both had a crush on the same girl Yeah, and we were like, you know, let we made the, the 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 agreement. We're like, you know what? None of us, neither one of us, are going to go there because it'll mess up our friendship. Yeah. And then um, he ended up going there, and yeah. then I went. I so it was one of those things. And so that doesn't work because, like, we're people, and yeah. like sexually, we want what we want. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, I mean, talking about, I'm going to go for it, uh, mm-hmm. even though it says nothing about how I feel about you as a friend. Yes. But no, um, it's a very difficult situation. Uh, but you know what I would do? I would talk to your friend about it and I would hook up with the guy anyway. I because, would too. I mean, just life's about making experiences. And, and here's my thing. This is what I feel like doesn't get factored in so much is the fact that he has an opinion too. Like if he's not into your no, friend. No, he doesn't have a choice. But sh- <laughs> shut the fuck up. I mean, he's not into your friend. He's into you. So if it means. I mean, he's a guy. Uh, he's let's be the, honest here. Okay, but if he can have his pick between he's, the two girls. He's he going to have her. both. 
No, he's not going to yes, have both. Is. Let her have a fun homecoming. At the same time? At the same of course. Time. Come on now. <laughs> oh, if, he's, if he's good, he'll hook it. He'll hook it up. Okay. Well, <laughs> dear God. Okay. We're on her side. Feminism. Okay. I agree. But I'm saying that like, if he's slick, him and you no, know, but be, yeah, I mean like, yeah, he's, if happy, he's, if he's event. going to homecoming with this one girl, that yeah. means he, that if with like with you who called, yeah. then he's into you and he likes you. Absolutely. And I don't think that it's, it's not your responsibility to like preserve your friend's feeling of heartbreak from that guy because yeah. that, he likes you, not her. And if you choose to not go out with him, that doesn't mean he's going to like her. Correct. And there's also, uh, that being said, there is a proper way to go through the situation. Like, obviously, you're not going to want to rub it in your friend's face. Like, oh, look who I'm going yeah. out with, you know. But if you're going to do it, there's sort of like a polite way to do it. And yeah. that that's that would be what I would uh, say. Yeah, I wouldn't make out in front of her no. and him on and the also, dance floor. And also, I would have a conversation before. That's, yeah. that's all. Uh, like, hey, I know you like him, but hey, he likes me. <laughs> I'm obviously the better choice. No. But I mean, if you both have a crush on him yeah. and it's both kind of known, I will also say too, I one time, one time, I didn't make the... Okay, whatever. I one time had a friend being in the situation where a guy and I liked each other and one of my friends liked him and was like, I don't want you guys to date. And I was kind of like, fuck it. I don't care. We're not that close. I'm yeah. going to still hook up with yeah. this guy and date him. And then he was like, no, I don't think we should because of this. And now looking back on it, I'm not friends with either of them. And the fact that this made me stay up for like yep. three days straight yeah. stressing about yeah. this. I'm Doesn't like, matter. I'm not friends with this girl. I'm not friends with this guy. Why was this such a headache? Yeah. I think you just have fun in your homecoming and your other people's happiness is not your responsibility in this situation. You know, uh, on a different subject, Megan and my <laughs> girlfriend both make jokes about me that I am a total dad. And this yes. is that part of me. I'm listening to this conversation and I'm like, you're scared. She's getting pregnant. I'm the, no, I'm like, oh. th if I'm, if this is my daughter, I'm like, I don't want my daughter <laughs> to be talking about hooking up with some guy. Like you're 16 that like, you should, you should be in school studying. Like this isn't, <laughs> she gets to let you know? loose. Don't don't school absolutely. Studying. absolutely. Yeah. I'm don't like, go to 16. homecoming. Leo Howard wants you to study and watch. Kick nah, out. Come on now. I mean, when I was 16, I would have, yeah, doing the same thing. Have fun yeah. at homecoming. Um, tweet, I hope it goes awesome. Yeah, tweet us pictures. I want to see. I want to see your date too. Yeah. Tell us if you hook up. Yeah, please. Also, use a condom if you're going to have sex. Please. I was just going to say, wrap it up. Make <laughs> wrap him wrap it up. It up. Wrap yeah, it up. Make him wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> or just make out. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're a bad influence. Horrible. I am like, I'm like the devil together. and the angel. Like, I'm like, no, in one hand, you're 16. You shouldn't be doing this. The other hand, like, wrap it up. Have wrap fun. It up. You know. Use okay. this trick. No, sorry. Gross. <laughs> okay, on to the next call. So I'm 18 years old, and um, I need some boyfriend advice. I've been dating my boyfriend for, like, around three years, and he's the only person I've ever had sex with, ever. He took my virginity. You know, it's good stuff. I really like being with him. Um, but I'm just kind of worried that I'm going to live my whole life without having sex with anyone else. And I'm kind of just worried I'm never going to be able to experiment. And his, my issue is like, I've tried to be open about asking him if he's more open to letting me do things like that. But he's very like, that's cheating. That's bad. That's bad. And I agree, but I don't know what to do. So I just need some advice. This is particularly hard yeah. because this is one of those things that, you know, when you're in the moment, it's, like, you know, you're 18 years old or mm -hmm. however you're young. It feels like, you know, this is it's it. This is it. Exactly. And, you, you know, 20 years down the road, you look back and you go, wow, my life, mm -hmm. I've had so much happen. So um, what do you think? I want to hear what you <laughs> think first and then I'll give my opinion. Um, Here's what I'd say. Um, As somebody who I, okay, knock on wood, fucking hope I end up with my, it's my boyfriend forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, okay. absolutely. Well, I would I, hope you wouldn't be in it unless, you know, yeah, you that's were totally kind of where, committed. Yeah. Where I'm at in my life with this relationship where sure. I'm like, there's, I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of end game in mm. that sort of mentality. Mm -hmm. Um, all of your eggs are in that all basket. of my eggs are in that basket. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my, my, I don't know if he was the first person that I ever dated. We, I would be ready for that. So even though that like, I would consider him like, I'm, I don't f f fucking hate the word like soulmate and all that stuff. I wouldn't, I don't even really like necessarily think that's real, but I think like you, the person you end up being with 
is because you meet them at a certain point in your life and mm. they're at a certain point in their life. Mm. And I think like sexuality and experimenting mm. with stuff and feeling confident and comfortable with that is important. So, so important. if I was, if I was like 18 and Mots was the only guy I'd ever dated, yep. I don't know if he same. would be the person but that it, I would want to end actually, up with. It wouldn't be the same because your life I'd experience be a totally pre- different person. Mots has set you up for yeah. this relationship now. And I hear people talk about that where they go, if I'd have met this person at, you know, 15 mm-hmm. years old, I would be with them. And I go, that's not true at all because your entire life sets you up for where you are. And what you're, what you're attracted to, what you're interested in, what you what value you appreciate, in the What you value, mm-hmm. like things that you appreciate about that person, you may not necessarily appreciate if yeah. you hadn't had another situation happen to you. Ma'am. But that being said, if, if, if you have a sort of, if you're having these thoughts, if you're with this person and you're having a sort of frustration about not getting out there and you, mm-hmm. you want to experience other things, um, that's okay. That's, yeah. that's completely human. And that's, that's, that's normal, especially for someone that you've, you know, you've put all your eggs in this one basket yeah. for, you know, your life so far, this is the guy that you've been with. Um, so it's totally natural to want to experiment and want to have fun. And I wouldn't deny that. I mean, you've had the conversation with him and like, yeah, he's not crazy for being like, no, I don't want you to do that because yeah. that's cheating. Like, you know, but I, I think if you're that. having those feelings of wanting to be with other people and you're feeling that sign. No, that's kind yeah. of where I think if that those feelings naturally, if you're like, I, if this is the last no. person I'm going to sleep with all that stuff. But that being said, like the grass is always greener. The, that's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. The grass, you have nothing to compare it to. And I understand that that's where yeah. she's at. And that's, um, but that's I think difficult. there's either, it's either you don't, you don't kind of take some time and separation and you're going to feel resentment for like the, what if like, Correct. what if I miss out on all this other stuff? And then there's also a chance that you, if he ends up being the guy that you want to be with forever and everything like that, and it's supposed to end up being yeah. together, then you'll end up being together and uh, he'll be able exactly to get over right. at this time period that you My need. recommendation would be to take a, take a little break. Yeah. That would be what I would say. Um, I mean, speaking as a guy, it's, not necessarily as a guy, but for me, yeah. like commitment's really scary. Yeah. Like it's a scary thing and you, you're never, I mean, in my opinion, I'm not really sure until I dive in that I go, oh, this was a good decision. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so, uh, yeah, my, I would say take a break. Yeah. And, and I mean, you, you also, you can't let life pass you by. If you're really wanting to experience mm-hmm. these things, you got to, and you've got to try all this. And you know what, if it's there when if you wrap back around yeah. and you really want it to be there, if it's there, great. If it's not, you move on mm-hmm. and it just makes you a stronger person. And it just adds to that little bank of life experience that yeah. we all pull from and we can be a better person for yeah. it. Yeah. So. Oh, good one. Plus, I mean, if you love him and you really care about him, it's not fair to him if you're like yeah, if, trying to be like, oh, I want to fuck other, other dudes. I, exactly. If you're, if you're looking around and uh, that's not necessarily fair to him because no, not at all. You yeah. wouldn't want him doing that to you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want my girlfriend to be like, no, I have eyes for all these. I'd be like, mm, that yeah. bothers mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That bothers me a lot. I, I, I would, I would advise a little bit of a break and do some, have some you time. And on the other hand, honey, have fun. Yeah. Life is short. Yeah. The shit I did at 18. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I know some of the shit you, you did. Do. You do know some of the shit I did. <laughs> yeah. Mots wouldn't date me back then. No. I wouldn't date me back that's then. That's also the other thing is uh, that's necessary. I, I mean, I wouldn't say this is my opinion yeah. only. Like, I think it's necessary to have other experiences to build uh, life experience yes. and a skill set. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a good one. Okay, guys, we are going to take a quick break and we will be back. Thank you so much to Away for supporting our podcast. Away makes affordable, high quality suitcases that charge your phone and start at just $225. By cutting out the middleman, Away is able to offer the perfect luggage made with high quality materials at a much lower price. I mean, seriously, guys, have you ever tried to find luggage that doesn't cost you like your liver or like your first three children that you haven't had yet? It's crazy expensive, but Away is not expensive. Also, it's chic and aesthetically pleasing. They've designed the perfect suitcase to make your travel experiences stress-free, which is impressive because I am a ball of anxiety and stress all the time. And you put me on an airplane and I'll be real, that doesn't go away. Kind of just amplifies. But it has two USB ports and a high capacity battery that allows you to charge multiple devices on the go. What does that mean for all of you? I mean, all of you are like hip, cool kids who knows what like devices are. They're not like, I mean, they're phones, guys. Talk about phones, tablets, laptops, et cetera. You never have to worry about a dead phone or fighting for an outlet at the airport. No, there won't be a bloodbath at LAX. You don't have to you don't have to get angry at anybody because you have your own thing. And you can just charge your phone where all of your friends they they don't have charges. And you're like, "Yeah, guess who you watch funny cat videos the entire day? It's me." 
It's ultra durable, yet lightweight, made with premium impact resistant German polycarbonate. Polycarbonate, good job. You made it strong. The Germans did it. They killed it. It's great. I say this because I, I feel like it's a sturdy, strong suitcase. It's a smooth ride in any direction for 360 degree spinner wheels that won't get stuck or break. So you can do that fancy thing with your luggage where you can spin it in circles and you can be that person who's like walking through being like, I don't have to lean my suitcase. It can roll just straight up. It's impressive. You look nifty. You look like you travel a lot and you have an important job with a very cool boss. Their theft-proof, TSA-approved lock combination built-in keeps your belongings safe and even overpackers like me can fit everything they need with a patent-pending interior compression system that tightly buckles in bulky items. Like your friend who couldn't afford a ticket, you just stuff them in your suitcase and you're perfect. Away comes in four sizes, carry-on, the bigger carry-on, the medium, and the large, and multiple color options. You've got a 100-day risk-free trial period. If you decide it's not for you, return it for a full refund. And guess what? They're not going to ask you any questions. They're going to be like, all right, son, you good. That's fine. And it comes with a life warranty. If anything breaks, Away will fix it or replace it for life. Do you know how many things I wish I had a life warranty on? Like so many other things. But my suitcase, hey. Heck yes. I'm a huge fan of this suitcase. I'm actually getting ready to go on a trip soon and I'm going to bring it with me and I can't wait. I'm so excited because I'm not going to have to charge my phone at one of those outlets. It's cute. It's perfect. It's a great compact size and um, it looks different enough that I'm going to be able to pick it up when I go get it from the, um, the, the carousel of doom. It's no longer going to be the carousel of doom because I'm going to recognize my luggage because it's cute. And it's like electricity charged. It's not electricity charged. That's like the wrong sciencey term. But I don't know. I feel like it's it's cooler than the other ones. It's smarter than the other suitcases. <laughs> Plus, you guys can get free shipping anywhere in the lower 48 states. Away is a special offer just for listeners of this show. So give them some mad kudos because you're going to get some deals. Score yourself some deals. For $20 off your order, go to awaytravel.com slash blame and use the promo code blame at checkout. That's awaytravel.com slash blame promo code blame. Woo! Get your flight on. Get your flight on. Okay, guys, we are back with the next call. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Megan, my name is I'm 15 years old and I have a bit of a situation. I was seeing this guy and I'll be blunt, <clears throat> I sucked his dick. <laughs> and months later, after things have fizzled away and, you know, you know, we're both blocked on each other's phones, like it's irrelevant. I found out he has a girlfriend and had a girlfriend and I was just, I know. A bunch of people in my life keep telling me I need to tell her and it's wrong of me not to. But I personally don't want to get in the drama. I don't want all of that. But what do you think I should do? Should I tell her? Or should I just keep it a secret? Guess you'd be sucking the wrong dick. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope everyone knows you, that Leo looked at me and was like, like, I'm going to talk one. first. I'm going to talk first. I'm like, okay, <laughs> say what you're going to say. We have to have you back on. Say what you mean <laughs> to say. say. I would love it. <laughs> oh, so I, I actually, she mumbled through okay, it and I looked at 15. Megan and she was like, suck dick. Yeah, I was, I was, oh, I was mirroring sucking a dick because Leo was like, yeah, hey, what did she do? Air blow job. Yeah. Air blow job. <laughs> Everyone's like, everyone, she, gave gave me the air, she gave me the air blow job on Ew. air. No. I think it's called an air job. It's air, air job. job. <laughs> hey, <dang. laughs> okay. Oh, so Jobs honestly, we said, <laughs> she's 15, right? Oh, good. That's better than, I thought she said 13. I was like, what are you doing at 13? Yeah. Sucking dick. Badly. That's what you're doing. If poorly, you're sucking dick at 13, you're doing it badly. Poorly. Um, I, I actually, I think I have a really fucked up opinion on this. You're, like, you're saying don't tell. Yeah. I mean, I, know I just, say that. you know, just because things have a way of working themselves out and situations like that, they do work out. And if you're cheating, it's going to, it, it has a way of coming to the forefront. And you're saying she shouldn't tell I don't think she the girl. should. His, his current and then girlfriend. Uh, here's the thing. If I was in that yeah. situation. I have been where <laughs> Wait, you are. Where in I'm the sorry, situation you're still you in, in the microphone as you're like, I, if I've been in the situation. No, I know. I Hang on. What, what, where were you in that situation? <laughs> I was the person. You were. I was the, the, the che- wait, how do you, you say You were it? the side hoe? This person. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was, no, was this side- person was cheating on their significant other with me. Yeah, you and were I didn't the side hoe. And I, I didn't know it. I mean, I kind of knew it, but which is messed up. I'm sorry. But like. Did you know or did you not know? No, uh, okay. I did not know. Well, Megan oh, said. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Here's the thing. You did not know 
And then you knew. And then you were like. Oh, she didn't. I, 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 it's not my business. <laughs> that was it. That was the whole thing. Because that just makes me a horrible person. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't make you a horrible person. Well, what do you, what do you think? Megan? Here's what I would say. Um, I think, so I have had, I've had a friend <laughs> who's the girlfriend in this situation. And my opinion would yeah. have been a hundred percent with Leo on this. If I hadn't had known a friend in the situation mm. where she had this, but I'm also still, so my friend had a, ha, knew this girl. No, my friend had her boyfriend. This girl came out of the woodwork and said that he was cheating on her with him, but she didn't know this girl. So there isn't a reason for her to know or trust mm. that this person is telling the truth. Mm. So I think that's kind of where it's hard. If you don't have a relationship with this girl, there, there, there isn't necessarily any reason for her to believe you. And it, you're kind of, in, like you're saying, you're kind of inserting yourself into someone else's drama, which I don't think is necessarily healthy. And yes, mm. it's going to come out no matter what. Um, but I think if you do feel guilty about it, if you're like in the same friend circle or something like that, I think for sure. But I would try, I before you say anything to her, I would try and feel out the situation as a whole and see if she has any idea. Like if she has any suspicion that her boyfriend might be like, not faithful to her or something like that. Because if you're just dropping a bomb as like a rando girl who's like, Hey, um, nice to meet you. My name's, I don't, you didn't, you didn't say, I don't let's pretend your name's Mackenzie. Hi, my name's Mackenzie. I sucked your boyfriend's dick six months ago. Kind of a thing. And you've like <laughs> never, this girl's never met you before. By the way, that's like just a great icebreaker. It is. I, that's <laughs> how I meet everyone at parties. There's so many people who think my name is Mackenzie. Hi, my name's Mackenzie and I sucked your boyfriend's dick. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Specifically six months ago. Six months ago. <laughs> I mean, also it's like, it's a blowjob. It's like a handshake in some places. Right? <laughs> Ooh, Maddie Sometimes. is not happy. <laughs> I really wish I didn't bring my girlfriend. <laughs> no, no. Maddie's chill. Maddie walked into my apartment you and saw- shake my hand, baby? <laughs> Ew. Uh, she saw this, I have a poster that says pussy, and I was like, this is how I know we can be friends. Mm. She liked it. Yeah, uh, I would listen on this. This is one. Listen to Megan because I. No, but I get what you mean. Also, also, just so I'm everyone knows, I come to Megan for all of my advice. So I don't know actually why I'm here. No, we come to each other. I will be like, <laughs> yeah, am I being yeah. crazy? Am I being psycho? Yeah, I'll be but, like, yeah, yeah, you crazy, are always. Yeah. Um, that's what I would say. I think if you don't have a relationship with a girl, it's just going to cause more drama. But I also think you. It is such a personal thing. If you were in this situation, would you want someone to tell yeah. you? Like, would you want someone? I know if it was me, honest to God. Uh, if some girl, if like Mott's ever cheated on me, first of all, so help fucking him because I will unleash oh. the I mean, wrath. I mean, I, I would be <laughs> angry at him, be... but I would want to protect him because I'd, <laughs> feel, I'd, I'd be terrified. I think all of my friends would not oh, Mott, side with, stay Mott, with me, bro. They would honestly be like, dude, okay, we got to come, come with a plan. She's going to fucking kill you. Um, but I think in that situation, I, I would, I would want someone to tell me. I would, as if opposed to finding out on my own, if yeah, someone was but, to tell me, I'd want to know. But you know your situation, though. That's yeah. the exactly. Only, that's, that's the only thing. Is she would know hers. You don't necessarily me. know this girl's yeah. situation yeah. and the dynamic of their relationship. They could have been on a break. They yeah. could have been. Like, oh, you just she, don't. I'm just saying you don't. Know we the were deep, on a break. That's true. I mean, that's I've, right. I've, I've made out Sorry. with. But that's the thing. You don't know. When they've yeah. had that's, girlfriends. that's my point is you don't know. I mean. For all you know, she's aware of that. Yeah. And it's open or you suddenly inserting yourself into the middle of their dynamic could potentially embarrass this person. Yeah. At, or it could And you. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I kind of feel like oh. what exactly do you have to gain besides just like you know, you're making a lot of assumptions about this girl saying yeah. like, I want to let her know in case she doesn't know. Mm. Maybe she does know. And they moved past it. Maybe she oh, does yeah. know and she's cool with it. Or, there are, there are, listen, I'm just saying, yeah. I, there's a lot of assumptions we're making here because they sure. are, they're living, we assume a traditional heterosexual couple, but like there are people who have dynamics. There's, I'm just saying like, there's like, I've got gay friends, for instance, where it's just like, that's not a big deal in their yeah, relationship. It's a handshake, essentially. <laughs> Effectively. <laughs> it's like, but I'm just saying, and then mm -hmm. there are other, I have other friends who are in relationships where that would be completely uncool. Of yeah. You don't know their dynamic mm -hmm. and to make that assumption and insert yourself, all you know is you had a thing with this guy. That thing is now over. So it's yeah. kind of, yeah. I mean, there is other it's, relationship is kind of none of your business. It's an point. intrusive situation, but this is an intrusive show. It is. So my, my, other, my feeling would be to talk to him and to I say, know, and I, yeah. I would just say like, Hey, if she didn't know that's uncool. Yeah. And if, and if you, if you're, if you hurt her, you should do the right thing here Yeah, and then leave it at that. Yeah. But like this 
I guess especially just like, cause you're basically going to this girl and saying, yeah, he cuckolded you. That's I love super, that word. That's Cuckold. super, that's, that's, that's potentially super embarrassing. Yeah. No, it's it not is. Good. Yeah. I'm also the, kind of taking back everything I said. Cause I'd now realized that I've been this girl before and I've said nothing. Well, and I was trapped in an elevator with both wait, of these on, people. Wait, hang on, which girl? The, I've the been cheating. the side hoe, uh-huh. not knowing. A By th- the way, the side hoe is the word that she used. I don't normally speak <laughs> Did like you just that. call this poor Do girl a side, side hoe, Jack? Jack, that's not Jack. acceptable. No. She's a minor. Damn it. <laughs> She's, it's June 18. Here's oh, one 15. thing that I, I want to top it off with. Make sure if you do want to tell this girl, make sure you're doing it for the right reason. But not what's a the sort, right reason? Well, wait, make yeah, sure that it's not right self-gratifying. Like, that's what it look is. Look how that's- hot I am. Look how how... You know, look, I made your. Oh no, I, I think it's. I think it's more clear your conscience thing. Yes, but I, like, yeah, you can't. I think it's more girl, should be girl power. Yeah. By the way, your yes. boyfriend's a dick. Yeah. Exactly. I'm exactly. warning you, so you know what yeah. you're into. Yeah. Which, by the way, she. I think she must know. She does have a right to know. I think. Yeah. But that's not for you to be the one to tell her. Yeah. Or just send us where just, he lives, and I'll go beat him up. There, Good. There you go. Also, no, you can't threaten that. You're actually scary. Oh, he's when I. Well, no. Right. Also, when I threaten that, it's like not as intimidating because I do Pilates. Yeah. But like you, yeah. you could, you could, uh, kill him. you could shank a hoe. Kill him. Well, how I did it is I found out that this guy had a girlfriend, and I was like, uh, okay, not oh. my business. I mean, I'll be honest. I didn't, I didn't hook up with him at all after that. But like, I wasn't like fully, like, oh, I'm gonna ignore all of your text messages or whatever. Did you guys and, just cuddle? Huh? You, you know like who this is about too, but I'm just not gonna say it out loud. Yeah, your face just reaction. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. And I got trapped in an elevator with them, and it was the most uncomfortable and awkward thing ever. But wait, you Jared were trapped. Leto. You were trapped. In I an wasn't elevator. trapped. I just was going in the elevator. It just was a lot of floors. Okay, got <laughs> it was it. like 37 floors. Mm. Um, but I think, I mean, I don't think I would. I felt awkward and I felt weird, but I think I would honestly have felt more awkward and weird if I had then told her like a couple years ago. By the way. I hooked up with your boyfriend and then they stayed together mm. and dealt through it. Cause I'm sure I know for a fact, she knows now purely based on like how she's acting and they've gotten past it, yeah. but I'd feel so embarrassed if I had like said something, but also, I mean, we're assuming I, I have the inept, amazing ability to clear my conscience like that. <laughs> so you may not have that. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And you kind of also have to deal with the fact that sometimes you're going to make, uh, you're going to make accidental mistakes like this and mm. you're going to feel guilty, but you just kind of have to like live with well, it. But th- unfortunately that's, that's just the cost of doing business. I mean, like how, how, would, she have known, how would she have known unless she quizzed him before and like, Hey, before hey, I suck so, your dick, hey, where um, are you from? Are What's you in a monotonous like? relationship? Are you in a mon- okay. Not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah that's the other thing. Like, hey, we, look. we don't we don't know that they were monog- monogamous. Yeah. I mean, or he might have said, hey, "I have a girlfriend." Yeah, maybe he said it as he was coming. <laughs> yeah, that's what that might have been. Hey, girlfriend! <laughs> and she's like, "What?" Hey, no, no, girlfriend! Oh my <laughs> god! I got I got a great story, but I can't tell. <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't do it. On to the next one. Hi, Megan. So I'm 21, and I have a sex question. So I've been dating this guy for a couple months. And we just started having sex. And it's really great, really great sex, really good in bed. Chemistry is there. Everything is there, except, like, we're just in bed. And he really likes talking dirty. And I do, too. So I'm like, whatever, great. And I think it's sexy, but not when he does it. And it's just so bad. Like, it makes me cringe. And... I am very upfront, like I'm a very blunt person, and I just tell you what's on my mind, but I just can't have the heart, I don't have the heart to tell him, stop fucking talking in bed, because it's turning me the fuck off. Like, I had an ex who did it, and it was just so hot, and it was just so hot, and like, he just talks in bed, like, it's like, just like a verbal conversation, like, we're just have like, I'm talking right now, like, that's how we, like, talk, and I'm like... And, like, stuff he says is just, oh, I just don't like it, and I don't have the heart to tell him, like, please stop doing that, because I put myself in his shoes, and I was like, if a guy ever told me, like, I really don't like when you talk in bed, like, can you stop? I would be fucking mortified, humiliated. So, please help. I don't know what to say or how to say it. It's so not sexy, and, like, it's great. Everything's great. He's great. Sex is great. It's just, like, when he starts talking dirty and it just, it makes me cringe and it turns me off, but please, please help me figure out what to say to him. I think you just need to like be kinky one night and get some duct tape and tape his mouth. (laughs) 
<laughs> I was gonna actually go That's there. That's 100% what or, I would say. Or I would just fucking grab and be like, shut the fuck up. And, just, <laughs> and, and every time he starts no. to just be aggressive. But yeah. I would know, no. I would honestly try and play it off as being sexy. Like, babe, like, let's try this. On the this. other hand, I and, like, really want to know what he says. I just, I want to hear it. Me too. I like, just, great like, job. <laughs> I can't like, even. Go down on me, go, baby. Yes, baby. I love oh, it when you man. suck my penis. Yeah. <laughs> my wow. penis loves your vagina. I'm so hard for you. I, I am. My penis is uh, hard. You, you think he's really clinical. That's, I don't know why. That's I, what I'm I, thinking. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oof. Dirty talk is a really hard one because they, like it's it hard. It, <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> if if it's the wrong like vibe or atmosphere or chemistry, it's, it's just it can't be worse. Yeah. And if it's good, it's good. It's great. It yeah. can be a complete asset. Yeah. Otherwise, it is like fully like full it's just body a liability. Cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Get it assets and liabilities. Assets. But let me ask you this though: uh, if you were on the other side, wouldn't you want to know? Well, here's the thing. Wouldn't yes, you want the other but, person to say, I, this thing you're doing, I find super unsexy? Yes. In a positive way that isn't yes. like shamey and embarrassing. It's, at first, it's going to be weird because I, it, it'll put him in his head a little bit, for sure. There's no question about <laughs> like, God, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, 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 I, if I had a girl who'd be like, look, it's really you would, turning. Also, it's you would turning lose me your off. shit. What do you mean? If a girl said that to oh, you. I would make me doubt everything. You would about, literally yeah, no. lose your shit. You would 100% lose your what shit. What do you mean lose my shit? I'm just you, like, hang on. It, well, how would you frame it in a way where yeah, you would have this where you, you would have to give positive shit. reinforcement yes. to the work chemistry ha- specific is- things that you like that he does use in like dirty talk if there are, if you can or talk to him how you want him to talk to you. Yeah, but can and, you, can't you frame it that way? And say also, like, no, you frame the, it like you're in eighth grade. Truth or dare. Or, I'm sorry, oh my no, God. truth. Play you the just questions. Go, like, what do you not like that I do? Yeah. And then he'll say something, and then oh, he'll know. ask that the same question. Like a, Boom. That, that feels like something playful that could turn very dark. I'm Well, I think if you give positive, I think if there's some, if you can find something that you like in his dirty talk, something, and then be like, I love it when you say this. And then he's like, oh, great. I'm going to like fucking find things that are similar to this because I'm getting positive reinforcement this way. Not like I don't like these things. Mm. I think if you magnify what you like as opposed to what you don't like. But if there's literally nothing he says in dirty talk, then I mean, I, I, I maybe you just say you don't like dirty talk. Yeah, in general. I just play loud music. Yeah, isn't that, <laughs> that's I think True. the thing that you have to frame it around yourself. You have to. You have to. So that way it's not like, this is not a uh, deficiency on your side. It's a deficiency yeah. on my mm-hmm. side. It's just like, I know I'm weird. I just really don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one too. Cause then, then it's like, oh, you know, I'm good at this, but she doesn't like it. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and as then, a guy. Yeah. And then it's not affecting his ego. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's a fragile thing. Like, you know, a guy's ego. It is fragile. You know, in that kind of setting. Well, that's, well, that's my question though, because if someone yeah. said it to you, how would yeah. you th- how would you want him to frame it so that you wouldn't? I'll tell you be what, upset? I'm a straight up person. It would definitely, it would totally bother me, and I would call Megan and be like, I don't <laughs> I'm know like, what to do I with my get life. A phone call what do I do? But seconds. wouldn't you want to know? A hundred percent. I yeah. want to know, and I'll tell you what. A good week into having sex after that, it would be fine. Like yeah. it wouldn't be awkward anymore, and it would be. I'm also a guy. I like to joke about things that actually are, are serious, yeah. self conscious mm-hmm. things about me. I like to joke about it, and that helps. So it would be. For me, it would be something that I joke about, and 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 then you know, move faster. I would time. go over the top to be worse. Funny, yeah, funny yeah. about it, yeah. Yeah, I think I honestly though I stick with my first advice and gag him the first time <laughs> and use that as like being fun, kinky kind of thing, and maybe he'll be super into that, and then you can just like Ball fully gag. be like, yeah, don't talk, and then that could be the new thing. Mm-hmm. But then I think also he'll pick up the point, but then be like, hey, so you don't like it when? Yeah. Say, oh God, no. what if he gags her and then all he does is talk? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oof. What do you, do you think? It's subtle if you walk into the bedroom with like airplane earmuffs. Oh yes, noise <laughs> canceling headphones. <laughs> noise canceling. I like headphones. the idea. Just, do you hey, have a Sonos player? Just go, increase the volume go, as he starts. What talking. are these? Oh, just you know, just to block out you. <laughs> just to block you out. Just like really helping uh, my senses. Good God. Okay, well, yeah. let us know how it goes. I feel like we beat that dead horse. That we did. I just, that went, <laughs> and that, the dead horses yeah. are boyfriend's dirty talk. talk. We beat that dead. dick. What? Horse, horse. Dirty talk dick. Dirty horse. Dick. dick. <laughs> uh, do we have time for another call? We're doing Producer's Corner. It's time for Producer's <gasps> Corner. It's time for Producer's yeah. Corner. Leo has no idea what Producer's Corner Not is. Not a clue. Explain. But producer's I'm find out. Corner is where producer director Jack Ferry picks his favorite call or the most unique call oh, or the yeah. call that spoke to him mm-hmm. the most oh. this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I generally try to find the person with the best voice. Oh. Best dirty talk or lack thereof. <laughs> hey. Uh, so, yeah, let's listen. I'm very curious to hear both of your uh, opinions on this one. Okay. Hit it. 
Hi, Megan. Um, this is actually a real thing that happened to me. So I got into an argument with a friend of mine who uh, who told me that um, he doesn't like it when uh, his girlfriend gets a massage because uh, she always insists on having a male masseuse. And to him, he feels like it's kind of cheating because she finds the massage very sensual. Um, I kind of found this ridiculous. Um, but then he brought up a good point where, um, you know, if you're like a, a foot fetish person and you work in a shoe store, then that's also kind of you're taking what is a non-sexual act and turning into a sexual act. And uh, anyway, so he was saying because she uh, finds the massage um, stimulating, let's say, that uh, he considers it cheating. And I, I don't think that she finds it stimulating in the same way as the um, aforementioned person who works in the shoe store. But I kind of see his point, and I was curious, uh, getting the female's perspective on this argument, at what point would a massage cross over into uh, cheating? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts. Thanks. Uh, you were doing some hand signals there. <laughs> hand gestures. Leo and I were out doing some matching hand gestures. Bro, you need to give your woman a massage. That's yeah. what you need to do. <laughs> right? Um, okay. When does it when does it go into the area of cheating? I mean, okay. I like if like in my head, I'm like, does did do you, do you did get she massages? Fucking finish? M- funny enough, Mots and I are literally getting massages tomorrow because it's our anniversary. And he, when we, he was booking the appointment, he was like, "Oh, he was saying on the phone, he's like, oh no, I don't think so. Actually, wait.' And then he's like, "Do you have a gender preference of who does your massage?" And I was like, "No, I don't care." And he goes, "No, it's fine." Like literally, like didn't even cross his mind. If uh, if would it be is it weird for you, like if he was if just what? like it needs to be a, a female massaging? What, me. Is it, is she going back to the same one? <laughs> <laughs> or oh. is it like the same massage yes. therapist? Uh, yes. Well, you know what? Who she's, who she's. Then it might be deeper. It might obviously, not just be the uh, spoiler alert, I was the one who made that call. No way. Uh, Leo didn't know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I tried oh. to make eye contact with you. I was like, it's. Got it. Thank you. Uh, anyway, Got it. so yeah. A fr- so a friend of mine, his girl, his, basically his girlfriend was like, uh, she goes to the same massage therapist who she is very attracted to. Uh, no, that's not no. okay. Not okay. So, that's but that's my okay. question though, because yeah. he is a professional. He never crosses the line. Yeah. Um, but still just the fact that she's attracted to him just like triggers my friend. I mean, of course it does. Yeah, of course it does. Also, yeah, there's something to be said. If, if And also she doesn't take off all of her clothes when she gets the massage, but I, you know, like she leaves her underwear on. Oh, oh, oh well, oh, okay. Can't get past those. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, <laughs> but I'm saying, but, but, but so is that the, that's the difference. If you're yeah. attracted to your if you're attracted to your massage yeah, that's therapist, a, that's an then, then if you're that's cheating, then what's the line? If you're yeah, going, that's my question is where is the line? I think the whole thing is if if you feel if you're attracted to somebody who is not your significant other and you feel comfortable going back and seeing them repeatedly, I think that's a bad sign. I think that's that yeah. teeters a line on emotional cheating because yes. you're like, I recognize that you're making me feel things that I shouldn't feel for somebody else who I'm not in a relationship with. Mm. And I'm going to keep going and back. I accept that. And I'm going to embrace it. And I'm okay it. with yeah. that. I think that's where it draws a line because it becomes, uh, it doesn't necessarily just become like a sex because they're not having sex, but that to no. me sounds, it's more becoming an emotional relationship. And I think if you just love massages, go for it Yes, and get massages from like whoever you like. But if you're going back to the same person because you're attracted to, them and well no she's going back to that same person because he gives an amazing massage but she happens to also be attracted she mentioned that yeah he's really attractive i also couldn't i if i got a massage by someone and he and i was super attracted to him i would never want to go back again no it because a massage in in nature is is it's a bit sensual it is i think you know it can obviously not be there's i go to get thai massages that are couldn't and it'd be anything farther from central you get an old thai lady that's just so like painful out. yeah exactly yeah. 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 because i back. need it yeah uh but a massage in general is a bit central you got it someone is. else's hands all over your body you know you oiled up oil all slicked <laughs> up right um so if you are attracted to this person i mean i wouldn't say go as far as to say that it's cheating but yeah if you're attracted to someone and you are willing to repeatedly put yourself yeah. in that situation uh, choose to put yourself in that position that shows that maybe you're missing something you want to mm-hmm. get out I, I i so you think it's crossing the line i think it's i wouldn't say I think it's, it's cheating a conversation. I, just, I, think I think it's a conversation it's, oh it's more than a conversation in their relationship i, I mean so, yeah of contention I mean, but, but I he, wouldn't be. But, a- but the the counterpoint is okay. What if you're seeing a therapist? 
you know how some people when they start seeing a therapist, there's this thing called transference yeah. where sometimes you end up think you're, because you think you have a crush on your therapist. You you yeah. Right. So Conversationally, that happens, you're intimate, yeah. Yeah. And that happens a lot. And mm-hmm. then I was like, okay, so if that happens, then is that considered emotionally cheating? Because you're attracted to this person that you're sharing all of your secrets and feelings and because I think Do you I, know what I mean? Like where I, do you yeah. cross the line? Because because mm. obviously the, the therapist in the same way of a masseuse is a pro, isn't mm-hmm. going to cross the line, isn't going to do anything sexual. Yeah. But you're still spending, you know, time with the person. And I'm just saying, where do you draw that line? I think I think because um like a masseuse, it's the combination of right now, going back to the same one. It's the combination of like, there's a huge amount of physicality. Mm. And then there's also the, um, I think that's sounds like emotional cheating just because going, but you don't think the ah, same thing is true of the therapist. A therapist? No, because there's no physic, there's no physicality mm. in that where I think yeah, also there's something that's, that's like, true. it's not sexy to like talk about your childhood problems. No. And so like, there is a sort of companionship. It's an, that's an emotional bonding. That, yeah. That there's a companionship that you'll feel and like that trust there, but you're never like, you're not oiled up half naked as a person, like where, as your therapist is being like, tell me more about your broken childhood as they're like squeezing your ass. But I also wouldn't go as far as to say that it's actually cheating. No, it's. I wouldn't say it's actually I think cheating that it's, either. It, it is crossing the line. I mean, obviously, any relationship, depending on where your boundaries are. But it, uh, in my mind, I would definitely not like it if my girlfriend were going back to the same massage therapist because I'm saying in in this hypothetical situation because she's attracted to him, she keeps going back, which probably isn't the case. She just no, likes she the goes. Massage. She likes the massage. Yeah, it's one of it's the things. It just so happens that he's an attractive guy. But I'll tell you and, what, and my friend find it very like triggering to his Did she jealousy. say I was that a, she's attracted to him or he just thinks like no, she universally said she he's an attractive guy? She said she, she was attracted to him. Yeah. she's He's like, he's like, is he good looking? And she's like, well, yeah, you know, whatever. And then she's just like, uh, do you think he's attractive? Well, yeah, I mean, he's attractive. You're like, are you attracted to him? Is he gay? Yes. Is he gay? Uh, I mean, but I, I don't, don't think I don't, that I don't know that she knows. But I don't think that matters. I don't know that. I don't know that she knows. Yeah. No, I don't, just the comfortability of saying another guy's attractive. In my opinion, if if it were me, I would. If it were I don't me, think she knows. I don't think yeah. they don't really know each other that well. I would say you need to find a different massage therapist. That's if what it I would really, say if too. it's har- hurting your relationship that much, I don't think that it's not that's, worth sacrificing your relationship for a, a massage character therapist. Character flaw in your friend. I don't mm-hmm. think at all. I don't think that it's like his issue to overcome. I think that's a legitimate concern. Yeah. Um, well, might be being a bit paranoid. Yeah. But but, but at the same time, uh, based on but what let you're me, telling but let me ask you this. Yeah. Counterpoint. Mm. If you went in to get a massage yeah. and the masseuse was female mm-hmm. and you were instantly attracted to her, would you be like, nope, sorry, I need a new masseuse? Yes. Because, because men are weak. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, like, Honest, here's the other I thing. love it. <laughs> like, like, I am completely faithful. <laughs> But I'm not going to put myself in a situation <laughs> where I could fail. I, exactly. I'm just not going That's to because I, 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 for you, I, I like this. Uh, no, seriously. If I, walk I would be in, way too embarrassed. Sorry, I find you attractive. I need. I someone need you else. to leave. <laughs> I mean, just guys in general, we are weak, weak yeah. creatures. And so if I if I've made this decision, I'm not going to put myself in a position to where this yeah. is an option. That's what I would say. And as a girl, I also think that that rings true. And that's where if you're going back to the same situation where you know you find this person attractive and you know that you're getting excited because they're going to be they give a great massage, but there's something like oh he's also super sexy and I like the fact that he's touching my body and you're okay with that like excitement and feeling of that and going back to that yeah there that for me is thing. i would never put myself in that situation i'd be like like if there's like a fucking super hot trainer at a gym and you're like a straight guy i'm like one time i'll do your class never fucking again never a fucking again it's not not because you don't trust yourself no because also in in my mind it's disrespectful to the person i'm being with whether they know about it or not Mm -hmm. i feel guilty because i'm i'm being pulled in a certain direction and that's not fair to them yeah you know Exactly. And I feel like it's misleading to both parties. Because also there is there's a, there's a difference between a pure physical attraction and emotional yeah. attraction. And that physical attraction, you mm-hmm. can cut that off. You just walk away, just turn around and just Exactly. Feet, exactly. God. Wow. I really didn't think I was gonna agree with I've your grown, friend at I've the beginning. Grown from this conversation. I, me too. I, I, I'm a little bit uh yeah, you kind of convinced me to be honest. I know. I was very <laughs> much not on. I was very much on the girl side for the beginning of this. For call. me, it was when she keeps going back to him and she yeah. says she she is attracted to him. Yeah. Uh, even if it's just a, a again, statement. I don't think that's the reason she goes back. No, to him. I no, think it's he just gives not. a yeah, great right, massage. Right, right. Yeah, but, but it's also, a bit. It's a, a ton bit of people in your face. give great massages. I was just gonna say like, this. There's a lot of great massages out there, and I know yeah. a Thai, Thai lady down the street that gives <laughs> great massages. <laughs> And Happy I'm endings? not attracted to her. <laughs> oh, oh no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Well, we have reached the end. Oh, 
Uh, this is emotional. Thank I had so much fun, guys. I'm so glad. You were a great guest. I appreciate it. I had a lot, a lot of fun. Come back. I would love to come back. I mean, back. you're here I'm all the here time. I'm here at your house all, <laughs> all the, the time. time. And I'm about to go eat some brownies. Yeah, you are. I did make brownies. Um, Yeah, so people can check you out on... Oh, God. Okay, this is what I would say. I really mm. love your social handles um, because... I One, think it's hold a question, on, hold on. It's a call and it's, a response. Yeah. Also, did you know that? Because I think no. I told you that last. Nope. I think I told you that last year, two nope. years, whatever, two years ago, whatever. How long we know each other? I told you that, and I was like, "This is was this on purpose?" Mm. You're like, "Oh no, your ins, Instagram. No, your Instagram is who is Leo, mm. and his Twitter is I am Leo." <laughs> that was completely unintentional. That's great, but it works out great, and it's very pretentious. Very pretentious. It is. It is. I love it. Yeah. So you guys can find him there. You guys can also watch um, us on uh, Hulu. On Freakish. 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 Season two. You can binge all of season one. Both of us are making out with random people. Um, we They're not random people. They know them from season one. That's true. I mean, I just in this conversation, you talk about mods. I'm talking about my girlfriend. Oh, yeah. So it's like we both, random people. You can watch us make out with people you who are wa- not talking about we're like, others. Yeah. Massage, it's cheating. Yet we're making out with people. <laughs> oh <my laughs> it's God. cheating. I have like Melvin here, Gregg grabbing my, my boobs. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. that's not cheating though because I got paid. And I'm the camera a was rolling. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you want to give your feedback on any of the calls or if you are a caller from this episode and you want to give us an update or an update from a previous episode or if you have just things in your life that you would like some advice on, you can leave a voicemail at the number 310-694-0976. Again, that number is 310-694-0976. We would love to hear your thoughts on the episode on Twitter. And um, if you're an international caller, Jack is nodding because I did exactly what he wanted me to do, which is talk about international callers. If you're an international caller, shout out to you in various countries that aren't America, who's probably a better presidents, but you don't call them presidents. Prime minister. Okay. I don't know. Um, you guys can leave a voice memo. Just record it on your phone and email it to Megan podcast at gmail.com. Again, all of the same sort of suggestions, um, on how to leave your voicemail apply. Keep it under what we say. Three minutes, three minutes. Let's say like two minutes, guys. Let's say great idea. Let's say under two minutes. And, Spare but, us the extraneous details. Yeah, but like, give, give us, us but as the much raunchy context. details. Are we important. love the raunchy details? Tell us when but you suck a dick. But and, I don't need to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah but How we it like makes that. You feel shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst. Uh, yeah, we would love to hear from you guys, and uh, <sighs> we will see you in two weeks. And um, bye. Bye. Don't Blame Me is a production by me, produced and directed by Jack Ferry, associate producer Melissa DeMons, edited by Melissa DeMons, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and music by Giacomo Picasso and Ryan Hunter. I will see you guys in two weeks, and don't blame me if your life bursts into flames before then. (laughs) 